This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Today's video is sponsored by Mobile Premier League. Mobile Premier League, aka MPL, is an easy to use app featuring casual games you can play to win cash. It has all your favorite games in one place so you can decide what you're in the mood to play today. If you're extra competitive like me, you'll love the head-to-head -head and multiplayer tournaments. To play, simply deposit cash to your MPL wallet through MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, or Apple Pay, choose any game to play, and receive cash rewards if you win. MPL ensures that users' game plays and payments are protected. All Cash One is for keeps and can be easily and securely withdrawn to PayPal or your preferred bank account. Download now from the link in the description to sign up and get a $5 bonus when you start playing. Refer your friends and get up to $20 for every referral. Download the MPL app for free from the Apple App Store or MPL website for Android to play your favorite games, compete, and start winning cash. Must be 18 plus to play. Offshore oil drilling has long been a dangerous game. With spill after spill contaminating the ocean, it was only a matter of time before it came to a necessary and inevitable end. Enter into the scene the patient yet inevitable truth of nature fighting back. In tonight's story, our narrator will find himself in the midst of that reckoning. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? a show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it till the end of the night. <laughs> Hell water. I still remember the day I saw the Arctic Ocean bleed. I see it every time I close my eyes as if the memory is burned into the back of my eyelids. It's all so painfully vivid. The lights, the colors, the smells, the screams. This person has got me, baby. Now that's how you start a story. A what does that mean? The Arctic Ocean bleed? Huh? I have no idea. He's, he's serving up some tasty appetizers and here's what I'm doing. I'm looking at my fingers. I'm floating through the air like Yogi Bear smell in a picnic basket. This is a sumptuous story right off the bat. I'm excited to hear more from it. Sights, sounds, blood, the Arctic. The screams. The screams! If I hear screams, I'm, I'm buying a ticket. <laughs> they say there's an audio recording of that floating around on the internet. I can't account for its authenticity for I haven't had the courage to go looking. However, I doubt it's anything even close to the real thing. Like if there is a recording, obviously, of whatever happened on this day, would you not go looking for it to verify or would you not want to relive it? No, I, I guess I'd steer clear of it. I think I'd want it. Y yeah. You know, you could show your friends and stuff, invite them over for Catan. Instead, I pull out my katana and I put on my little film and I watch. Your little film. Do you like it? <laughs> I, can, I will continue to decline the invitations. Then I might have to bring the party to you. Okay. The operation was doomed from the start. Its very conception was rooted in immorality. I knew that fact, yet chose to ignore it for obvious monetary reasons. Not a day goes by that I don't regret my decision. Climate change. That was what had made it all possible. Glaciers cracking and splitting, melting due to the heat, giving us access to vast reservoirs of hydrocarbons that just a decade ago had been completely inaccessible. Once it became evident that global warming was making the waters of the Arctic navigable, a race began among multinational corporations to see who could extract the most oil. Isn't that the darkest irony you've ever heard of? These companies pay propagandists millions to deny the existence of climate change and then they turn around and use the opportunities accorded by climate change to line their own greasy pockets. Sickening. Greasy pockets. Sounds Yuck, uncomfortable. Yucky. That's the saddest part of uh, any story we've read so far. If you like really close your eyes, you can almost like see it happening. Yeah, profit <laughs> over everything, sure. Hey, that's what we do here hey, at Watcher. Cash rules everything around me. <laughs> yeah. Dollar dollar Mario. <laughs> Okay. But I guess I have no right to be too bitter about that. I was, after all, just another cog in the wheel, one who willingly took his place in the machine. 
In a way, everything that I went through there was divine punishment for my part in all of it. It happened at dusk, a beautiful one at that. The sun was a red ball sinking beneath the horizon, turning the calm waters into liquid rust. I was leaning on my elbows against the dull yellow railing of the gantry just above and to the west of the drill room, drinking in the beauty of the evening. Cool winds were sheeting off the surface of the sea, making me shiver delightfully beneath the multiple layers of bright and warm clothing I had wrapped around me. I'm just not, I'm, it's, it's I'm a being vivid swept image. away it's by It's a vivid this. image. I know this is going to be a horrific story, but in this it's one really lovely. brief moment, I am imagining myself just drinking in a, a delicious sunset. A gantry? Yeah. It's a fun word to say. Whisper it to yourself as you caress your own cheek. Gantry. Gantry. Oh. And then pretend that's the Arctic wind, you know? Yeah, the wind across your face. Gantry. It was the most extraordinary oil rig ever built. And not simply because of its location, but also because it was set to be the deepest one in the world, set up over what had then seemed to be the largest reservoir in the world as per our extensive seismic surveys. To its east loomed a large and wounded glacier, shattered snow-capped slabs of ice that drifted in the waters between the glacier and the rig hinted at the thawing that had made the operation possible. It hadn't been easy to set it up. To drill so deep required a precision that had exhausted some of the sharpest mines in the world. But work had progressed nicely, albeit a little slowly. The platform was secure, and the derrick, the hulking metal support structure, had lowered the drill pipe into the water. A slow and laborious descent later, the drill sank its metal teeth into the ocean floor and began chewing its way over to the reservoir as we pumped lubricants down the drill pipe to keep things churning. Contrary, this is the opposite of what Bruce Willis says in Armageddon. This guy knows a lot about drilling. Yeah, drill, rig, derrick. You know what a derrick is? Yeah, it's a guy. Pretty good. Thanks. I like that. Yeah. Cheers to that one, brother. Oh, That's yeah, good. of course. That's Absolutely. That's, That's the cheers. first cheers of the season. Smooth sailing, as smooth as can be expected for work like this. And then things went wrong. Terribly, horribly wrong. They dug into a devil. What if they just, like, accidentally killed the devil? Like he was taking a bath, yeah. and out of nowhere, just a. <sighs> And he's just spinning around in his bathtub because the drill is just spinning his little devil body. All the people in hell are like, yes! <laughs> now we can get a nacho bar! Being one of the few people off shift who were not inside the living quarters, I was the first one to notice it. A sudden darkening of the water around the rig. For a moment, it seemed like the shadow of something immense was rising from the depths. Something alive. I blinked. No, it wasn't that. No, it was a liquid, climbing upwards like a billowing cloud. Fast, the substance breached the surface and began spreading in a rough circle around the platform. Oil? Oh my god, what if it was like a fucking... Like, L an, like, like an oil daddy? Uh, no, oh. more like, a, like I was like a giant octopus or something. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was an oil daddy. What's an oil daddy? Sort of like a big daddy who's made out of oil. Like a big muscular, it looks like a big muscular guy, but he's made out of oil. Like real oily. Okay. My heart skipped a beat. It was bright red, thick, and gleamed like blood under the dying light of the sun. I shook my head. No, I couldn't think of it like that. It couldn't really be blood. Heart pounding, I reached for the radio at my belt to fire off a warning. I didn't get the chance to do that, because the very next moment, the Derek let out a horrible groan. Oh. <laughs> Just, oh. If this was in the Pixar Cars universe. Yeah. Oh God, can you imagine that guy with Cars eyes being like, oh. <laughs> Just been googly. Well, that looked like the Derek had something else happening to it. I turned and watched in horror as the huge metal structure holding up the drill pipe began to bend, inwards and downwards, like an aluminum can being crumpled from the top, as if something deep within the ocean crust was pulling at the drill pipe from the bottom, causing the derrick to give way under pressure. Another metallic groan, followed by shouts of fear and panic. It sounds like we're dealing with some kind of big sea creature here. 
because it's pulling down the Derrick. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's pulling down the Derrick. Unless that's the devil down there. Odds on devil, what? Like 25%? You know. You're just the devil walking through hell. Like, what the fuck's this? <laughs> oh? Huh? Does huh? it turn on a light somewhere? It seems to be attached to something. Yeah. What's that noise? Alarms began to blare as men in orange jumpsuits and hard hats scurried out of their stations and tried to make sense of what had gone wrong. I began making my way towards the stairs at the far end of the gantry. My legs trembled. My heart pulsed in rhythm with the alarms. I tried not to look off to the side. Something about that blood-like liquid pulling around the rig scared me something awful. I didn't want to think about what it might have to do with what was happening on the rig. I like this guy being like, there was just some quality to the, the ocean turning to blood <laughs> that didn't sit right with me. There's something about a metallic non-human structure <gasps> bleeding that really gave me pause and I don't know what it was. I had reached the small landing at the top of the stairs when the derrick creaked one last time and snapped with the deafening crash of metal against metal. It sounded like ringing bells gigantic ones, dozens of them, all at once. Thick beams of steel broke free of the structure and began smashing their way down to the platform as the metallic wires connected to the drill pipe started unspooling at a blinding rate. Some men ran for cover. Others near the hoisting machinery tried and failed to stop the drill pipe from being sucked down to the ocean floor, even as broken beams crashed down all around them. No one's gonna stop that drill pipe. Yeah, I know. This I mean, it's got to be huge. Also, there's no way I'm trying to save the machinery. If no, this I don't give a shit. I don't give a I'm, fuck about I'm, the machinery. I'm getting on a little rowboat and being like, see you later, everybody. I'm just going to keep rowing until I'm out of this blood. I stumbled and fell back on my ass, and my hands scrambled to push me backwards and away from this nightmare. Reaching the middle of the gantry, I drew my knees to my chest, clamped my hands on my hard hat, and cowered on the floor. Alarms rang. Beams fell. Men screamed. An eternity passed. Then, shockingly, a quiet descended on the platform. Shivering, I poked my head out from my cocoon. Alarms and machines had been switched off. Remnants of the shattered derrick stood silently, looking like a narrow iron cage with a hole punched through at the top. Jagged bits of metal pointing in every conceivable direction. The drill pipe was gone. Not a trace remained. I pulled myself onto my knees and crawled back to the stairs, trembling as cold sweat chilled my spine. Out on the main drill floor, no one screamed anymore. No one moved. Looks of fear were exchanged, a realization passing from one person to the next. We had just witnessed something unnatural, something unfathomable, and we were all too terrified to talk about it, lest we make it all real. Miraculously, no one was hurt. I hoisted myself up on my feet, suddenly ashamed that I had behaved like such a coward. What a pathetic display. Those placed under me were running helter-skelter, trying to prevent it all from turning into a complete disaster while I was cowering up there like a baby. Taking a deep breath, I started descending the stairs, my boots ringing off the narrow metal steps. I was more than halfway down when the sound of rumbling thunder rolled around the platform, which began to shudder. Metal flooring trembled. Glass windows of the drill room rattled against their frames, followed by a low and prolonged groan, as if the rig itself was moaning in pain. We were right. We were right. Yeah. The rig was going. <laughs> I clenched my jaw, wrapped my arms tight around the railing. Then, another sound. The roar of an ocean rushing through a narrow tunnel. My jaw dropped as the hole previously occupied by the drill pipe erupted. The bright red liquid I had observed around the rig exploded out like lava from the top of a cinder cone volcano. Higher and higher it rose, a thick column of ruddy fluid, cresting the derrick, going even higher before smashing down. It rained down on the drill floor and splashed my face. I whimpered as I recognized the coppery taste. It is so weird that blood tastes like that. Yeah, man. I've often heard it described as tastes like pennies, sure. which I always thought was weird because that means you're sticking pennies in your mouth. You never stuck a penny in your mouth? As a kid, you never like got a penny in your mouth? 
No, no. I mean, way. I don't go out of my way to eat pennies, but I've definitely even if even if you haven't tasted pennies, if you have a penny, I don't have a lot of pennies anymore. I want to find some more pennies. They're so hard to spend. Nobody wants your pennies. I'll wait till you circle back around. So, <laughs> all right. Well, let me tell you something. Pennies smell like blood tastes, <laughs> and they taste like blood tastes, and they probably taste like blood smells. This couldn't be happening. I thought it was a nightmare, one that I seemed unable to wake from. The drill floor once again was a bed of chaos. The fountain of blood was falling back down onto the derrick with such force and in such volume that it began to tip the derrick over. Men were crying, scrambling for cover, their boots splashing in blood. The derrick tore free of its foundation and came crashing down to the ground in a flurry of sparks, ramming into offices and engines and mud tanks, starting a dozen different fires. I saw men get crushed under the falling metal, get impaled upon jagged metal beams. It's safe to say that uh, that miraculously no one got hurt. Bit of an update. I guess when you're looking at your friends being turned into a kebab, you're like, yeah, I think it's over. It was the end. We were going to die. I bit back a sob. And then it got worse, much worse, because that's when the screams began. Dear God, those screams. I have never been a religious man, have never believed in God or the supernatural. Not until I heard those screams, because when they flooded out of that hole, I knew that I was listening to the very sounds of hell. The nails on a chalkboard doesn't even begin to describe them. They were shrill and loud, louder than anything I had ever heard, full of unimaginable anguish. Thousands upon thousands of voices slathered on one another, screaming for their lost souls. There was a terrifying musical quality to them, each scream a discordant note in an unholy song. Higher and higher and higher they rose, like an orchestra reaching for a crescendo that never came. My head hurt, and the skin just below my ears was warm and wet. I knew I was bleeding out of my ears. I should have gone deaf hundreds of decibels ago, but something unnatural was protecting my hearing while shredding it to ribbons at the same time. The contradiction threatened to drive me insane. My chest tightened like it had been lashed with thick iron bands, slowly squeezing the life out of me. Tears burned my eyes and my heart felt like it was sinking into a void. All happiness was ending. All the light in the world was fading and all that was left was pain an eternity of suffering in the deepest bowels of hell. This sounds unpleasant. Yeah, not, not my cup of tea. I gotta say it though, maybe I'm a weirdo. You are. But there's a small, small part of my brain, maybe a little bit larger than I'd admit, that would like to hear what this noise sounds oh, like. Oh, we'd all love to and hear it. And not only it. hear it, but experience what he's experiencing. Just for like five seconds where I was like, that was fucked up, you know? I think we'd all love to experience something, you know, large and incomprehensible and horrifying mm. um, with the guarantee that we'd be okay. I'd love to witness some sort of grand disaster from afar. Mm -hmm. I think it's fun to be reminded that you're little, that you're a tiny little speck and that things can be much bigger and scarier and, you yeah, know, it's, true. it's fun. It's almost a, a liberating feeling. Yes. Because it's like, well, I have no control here. What am I? What am I? Just a guy bleeding out of my ears. Right. I stuffed my fingers into my ears. It didn't seem to help. The screams just got louder, even grew harsher, offended at the thought that I would try and shut them out. Mad with rage and fear and hopelessness, I slammed my head into the railing, hard. The world spun around me as blood trickled out of a gash on my forehead, but the urge to harm myself had lessened. Some of the others hadn't fared as well as me. I saw one man running across the platform, boots splashing in the blood before he hurled himself off the rig and into the sea below. Another slumped against the wall of the drill room, eyes clawed out, cheeks stained with blood. More corpses littered the area, but there were some who were still alive. One who knelt and stared at the sky, mouth open, eyes vacant. One who was curled up like a baby, sobbing hysterically. Sounds like me and you at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> just you checking shit out in the sky, just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And me just curled up like a little baby, you know? There's screaming coming from hell and there's a blood geyser in front of you, so it's like. It's a real scene, man. Holy fuck. Yeah.
Yeah, that's what you would say to me. Check that shit Check out. Check that shit out. Oh. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Just cry, crying, crying, like curled up like a little baby. I didn't want to end up like them, and I knew the only way to prevent that would be to stop these screams. I bolted for the drill room and found more corpses amidst the machinery. My eyes shot towards the table in the corner, a stack of papers placed on top of it, a stack held together by a metal clip. With trembling hands, I yanked the clip free, straightened it, and jammed it into my ear. I screamed. And for a second, my voice was one with those gushing out of that hole. I pushed the clip as far as I could, until the pain threatened to knock me unconscious, until the sounds assaulting my ears lessened, became unbalanced. I repeated the process with my other ear, and this time, I did black out. Oh, that is so... Uh, uh yeah, man. It's very vivid. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a visceral description. Visceral, that's the word I was Just imagining, for. just a... Yeah. Yeah. Until you literally pop your eardrum like a water balloon. Is that how that works? Is that what it's like in there? Uh, I think it's a structure. Yeah. And there's I, a hammer and a. Yeah, you can pop it though. I remember in grade school they'd be like, "This is what's in the ear," and I was like, "I don't give a fuck. Go to hell." When I came to, night had fallen, and I had found peace. My head felt like a hammer was pounding against the inside of my skull, yet my skin tingled with pleasure. Silence enveloped me like a mother's warm embrace. Tears of joy pricked my eyes. No screams, no sound of any sort, just blissful quiet. After savoring the silence for a moment, I stumbled out of the room. Complete loss of hearing had affected my balance, as expected. The pillar of blood rising into the sky had retreated back into the hole, and I could clearly see fires raging across the platform, and could feel the heat wash over my face. No one was left alive. None that I could see. For a second there, it sounded peachy. I woke up. Things were fucking chill as hell. <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> yeah. Fires everywhere. Heat. Are we in hell? Did they done go down a hell oh, hole? Oh, maybe. I think he just woke up on a burning platform and was like, oh fuck. That could be, yeah. I like the idea though that the whole thing got sucked down into hell. I and devils there like, yeah, I got you. <laughs> I didn't know how it would end, whether it would be the fire that would burn me out of existence or the waves that would snuff out my life. But I knew that the end was coming. No help could possibly arrive in time. I squeezed my eyes shut and prayed that I wouldn't have to hear those screams ever again. I should have kept my eyes open, for if I had, I would have noticed the rescue helicopter flying towards the rig. Someone had called in for help before dying a single beam of light in the darkest day of my life. So, are you scared? Tight. So he's good. He's good, he's alive. Nice. Can't hear for shit, but he's alive. He's alive? Yeah. That's fucking cool, man. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> solidly written, uh, excellent flowery prose. I love it, it felt very Lovecraftian. Yeah. Maybe that's just the Arctic of it all, but um, just you know, sound is something you deal with every day. But this sound is so extreme; it makes people go crazy. Love it, a lot of fun. Okay, so if you like that story, that was written by Bikram Man, and his Reddit username is Mandark. So you can find his stories there. Also, be sure to check out the link in the description. That's a link to his book, Unclean Spirits: Horrifying Stories, which you can purchase. Talented guy. Yeah, I loved it. It's nice to be around someone who's talented. Yeah, I agree. I say For that once. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. You didn't hear what I said, right? Huh? When no. you were talking? Okay. We, we were complimenting each other, right? Yeah, I was. Oh. We'll see you next week, everybody. Ha, 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 ha.